It's Kimberly Leonard at Sky News, back with another extra episode of The Daily, because we can now use the name of the BBC presenter accused of paying a teenager thousands of pounds for explicit photos. It's Hugh Edwards, the corporation's most senior news presenter. Jake Cantor is back with me, investigations editor at Deadline, but also he was media editor at The Times. And Jake, we can now say it's Hugh Edwards because of a statement from his wife, Vicky Flynn. Let's go over the details of it. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it feels like the tone of this story is going to change significantly as a result of this statement. Um, As I've been reporting on this for the last five days, it has always been at the back of my mind that Hugh Edwards has spoken about his mental health struggles in the past. And I just felt that it was going to be inevitable that that would be uh, an issue at play here. And it's clear from uh, Vicky Flynn's statement that uh, the recent days have been very traumatic for them as a family. And it's taken its toll on Hugh Edwards as an individual uh, to the point where he's been receiving inpatient care at a hospital. Um, He himself has not yet commented and Vicky Flynn said that he won't do so until uh, he uh, is able to do so, which suggests that he won't be commenting until he's made some sort of recovery. um, When you, in the statement, she says that he's already been treated for depression before. I remember in his Instagram, there were a number of posts about mental health and depression So this is someone who has serious mental health issues. Yeah, he's spoken about it openly a number of times in the past, uh, both through his own social media channels and through interviews. And um, it is something he's an advocate for. He talks about it openly because he wants to um, help others talk about it. And um, it feels like the scrutiny that he's been under it was just uh going to be you know it 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 always felt like that that could be problematic potentially for him individually and for the family and uh, what we might see i think as i say is a a change in the tone of the coverage potentially Um, and it's clear that the bbc the bbc has been sort of signaling some of this in its statements in recent days they've been talking about duty of care they've been talking about moving forward carefully. Um, So there's been hints at some of this uh, in the BBC's language. And um, it's clear that they, the BBC itself is going to have to move forward very carefully when it comes to uh, picking up the investigation uh, and uh, making sure that it, you know, has a responsibility to both Hugh Edwards and his family and to those who have made allegations against him. And that's not necessarily an easy balancing act. And in that statement, his wife goes on to say he is now having hospital care and will be there for the foreseeable. Yeah, I mean, look, that sounds like uh, it could be an indefinite period of time. I mean, I don't really want to speculate about his own state uh, and, you know, how significant uh, his mental health issues are at the moment. Um, But it sounds like the fact that he has not been able to respond personally suggests that, you know, as I say, it's going, it's a, it's a very difficult moment for them as a family. However, that statement does go on to say that he does intend to respond to these stories that have been published. Yes. And I don't think that's surprising. Um, You know, Hugh Edwards is, Uh, known to his colleagues as um, someone who is prepared to stand up for what he believes in. Uh, He uh, is known as someone who will defend his track record and his character. Um, People talk about him uh, being, you know, very proud of his own achievements. And I think when the time is right, we will see some of those characteristics coming out in his response to these allegations. And then the final part of the statement in which his wife asks for privacy. Yeah, well, look, uh, we're in a situation where 
there has been privacy in the fact that he hasn't been named. Um, and yet equally, there has been this wild speculation online. And unfortunately, Hugh Edwards has become the subject of that wild speculation in recent days. Um, hopefully, in a sort of strange way, naming him will sort of release some of that pressure. The, the speculation uh, will die down and um, potentially, hopefully, uh, the family will be given the respect of their privacy and the BBC can get on with its work investigating this matter. So, Jake, I think it's it's probably worth taking people back over Hugh Edwards' BBC career. He's obviously one of their highest paid stars and he has anchored key moments in history for them. So Hugh Edwards is, I would say, unquestionably at the peak of his powers. Um, he is the BBC's highest paid and highest profile news anchor. And he has been trusted with some of the biggest moments in the BBC's history. He was the man who delivered the news of the Queen's death to the nation. That is arguably the biggest story in generations in the UK. Uh, and then, having done that, went on to anchor uh, coverage of the funeral, uh, which has won a BAFTA this year. Uh, and more recently, uh, he obviously was also in the presenter's chair for uh, the coronation of King Charles III. And just before his wife's statement came out, we'd heard that the Met Police um, say that there was no evidence of, of a crime from where, from what it had seen. So just, just before his wife's statement, we'd heard the Met Police say that there was no evidence of a crime from what it had seen. Yeah, I mean, look, I think clearly that will come as uh, some relief to Hugh Edwards and the family. It moves the focus of this story from one of uh, allegations of a potentially criminal nature uh, to uh, allegations are, are, are less serious. And um, having said that, it does not believe that this requires further investigation. The Met Police has handed the baton back to the BBC uh, and the BBC will now restart its own investigation into this matter. And I think, as I said earlier, I think this is a tricky balancing act for the BBC. They'll have to uh, clearly have a duty of care to Hugh Edwards and his family, uh, but also they have a duty of care to uh, the individuals who've made the allegations. And uh, it will have to walk that tightrope uh, over the coming weeks and months. So he's been named, but should the last few days have been different? I think we probably need a bit more time to consider what's taken place. Uh, I think there are clearly some questions about the mechanics and uh, application of defamation and privacy laws uh, in the UK. They have protected Hugh Edwards to a point, right? Um, uh, the media have not named him uh, and uh, his identity has been, you know, partially, uh, partially protected as a result of that. What the laws have not been able to tackle is, in quite the same way is the wild and defamatory speculation on social media. And uh, that speculation has impacted both Hugh Edwards, uh, but also uh, some of his very high profile colleagues, including Jeremy Vine, uh, Nikki Campbell, Gary Lineker, all of whom have faced baseless, totally baseless allegations over the last few days. And that suggests that uh, while it has provided some protection to Hugh Edwards, it has actually put others in danger. Uh, and that is something that we should consider, I think, going forward. So we had the Sun story about the pictures, then the subsequent claims about his conduct online and on dating apps. But without definitive evidence of criminality, some were starting, weren't they, to question what the story was here. Yeah, and I think we'll probably uh, see more reflection on that over over the coming days, actually. I think we'll probably start to see more questions about the Sun's own reporting 
and uh, why it has not been clearer about the evidence that it has um, and clearer about the seriousness of the evidence that it has. Um, it allowed a situation in which uh, other publications determined that the allegations that were made by the family of the individual concerned may be criminal in nature. And of course, we now know the police do not agree with that potential assessment. Um, so it's clear that the Sun um, will probably come under some scrutiny uh, over the coming days. His family have asked for privacy. So in terms of the media, what are the rules and the expectations going forward now? I would hope that um, my colleagues in the press uh, and you guys at Sky News, and I'm sure others, uh, respect Hugh Edwards and his family's privacy. Uh, it's clear that they're going through a moment of real and genuine trauma. Um, but also, uh, the BBC has to uh, carry out a process of investigation to determine whether, uh, although the allegations may not be criminal in nature, whether they actually... Um, raise uh, concerns and questions about his, his his professional conduct and that's a that's a very different matter and the BBC will have to come to its own determination on that because in that statement you really get a sense of just how how damaging this has been to not only Hugh Edwards but his family as well yeah I mean clearly it's been I mean they've been in an uh, uh, at the at the eye of the most extraordinary media storm over the past five days. I mean, it's hard to imagine how these events could have played out in a more public way. And I think it's also important to remember that there's another family in trauma as well. And that is the family who um, uh, made the allegations, orig the original allegations in The Sun about uh, Hugh Edwards' conduct. And we've got two families in trauma, and I think we should be cognizant of that uh, and when I say we, I mean the press should be cognizant of that uh, in our future coverage. Let's talk talk about his career and his position, the most senior news anchor. What does it tell us, this storm that has been um, carrying on for the last couple of days, what does it tell us about the expectation of someone who is paid so much of the licence fee? Are they held to a different account by the public because he is a BBC star or was it because he was essentially a trusted news source for millions. People felt that they knew him. You know, Hugh Edwards, he's such a, a household name. Mm. Yeah, I think all of those things are true. <laughs> um, I'm sure audiences uh, will be really shocked. Um, I'm sure Hugh Edwards is a, you know, he's, a, he's an incredibly highly regarded, incredibly skilled broadcaster. And uh, he is not in the position that he is in for no good reason he is you know he is a fixture in living rooms up and down the country and i'm sure has many many fans who admire his his professionalism and his coverage and i'm i'm sure this will be a difficult moment for those people who 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 like the work that he does uh he you know he is in many senses the B, the bbc's face he is the man that you associate with the the really key moments in its trusted news coverage, whether it be, uh, you know, those key royal events or indeed general elections. And yeah, as a result of that, he is, higher, he is held to incredibly high standards. Uh, but also I think it talks to uh, a sort of a, a more general cultural shift. I think uh, big personalities like Hugh Edwards and indeed, as we saw with Philip Schofield, they have they have responsibilities uh, and one of those responsibilities is to uh, you know, be careful and considerate with the power that they have. Um, and I'm not casting any aspersions on Hugh Edwards uh, because we don't have the full facts, but if it is found that he has abused his power and uh, taken advantage of um, young people, uh, then uh, the BBC will have to make uh, some decisions about whether he continues, uh, you know, on, on in quite the same way in their coverage, um, and also, of course, 
you've got the element of the BBC being in a position that it is. It is in receipt of you know billions of pounds worth of public money, and therefore it holds a sort of special status in our media landscape and is held to higher standards as a result of that. That's Jake Cantor, investigations editor at Deadline, but he was also media editor at The Times. This episode was produced by Emma Ray Woodhouse and the editor was Paul Stanworth.